What is up, guys? It is the Red Stone side. Just here, and I'm here with the uh, explanation video for the music fades and scene transitions in vanilla Minecraft. Now, uh, that video got a lot of... Not a lot, but uh, it got it got some positive feedback, and I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more stuff like this. But anyway, uh, this is actually a concept for uh, a map that... an adventure map that Dragon014 and I are working on. You can find his channel in the description. And it's a very hush-hush adventure map right now, but it's going to be amazing, and uh, it uses a lot of music. We're going to have a totally original soundtrack for it, which is very exciting. So, but let's jump right into what you want to see. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the link to this video will be in the descri description. So, uh, the video starts out walking over the pressure plate, we get the music. I don't have the resource pack on right now. I have three music files, uh, custom sounds, in this resource pack. Music 1, Music 2, and Music 3. So, in this area is Music 1, then the next is Music 2, and then the next is Music 3. Now, I'm going to show you how to implement this in your own adventure maps, but the thing is, you kind of already have to have this in mind when you build it, because... Uh, as many of you guessed, it does use teleporting the player away from the source of the sound, but it's a little more complicated than that. And uh, it requires each area of your map to be uh, at least a few hundred blocks away from each other, depending on the size. And we're going to go into why in a minute, but somewhere over here, in the center of this location where I want the sound to be heard, you gotta find the center, is a armor stand with a tag of one. And when I step over this pressure plate, we execute at that armor stand with a tag of one to play music music one now if you see in the play sound command by the way source isn't there just because i haven't updated my resource pack yet uh you can see here that there's a volume parameter and for this this particular uh song i set the volume to 12.5 which gives me about a 50 block radius a 50 block spherical radius around the armor stand that uh, my music is optimized for. Now let me explain why and what that means. Let's take a look at a graph down here. So, this represents the volume declination in Minecraft based on how far away you are from the source of the sound. So, m all natural sounds in Minecraft, you know, a sheep buying or a cow mooing, uh, whatever, can all be heard from 16 blocks away. And as you get farther away from the source, the volume goes down. Now, all, vo all sounds in Minecraft are between a real volume of 0.0, .0 and 1.0. Now, what that means is when, 0 .0, when it's 0, 0.0, it's totally silent. When it's 1.0, that's the maximum volume that the sound can get. But you are actually allowed to use higher values than 1. Well, what does that do? Because it can't get any louder. It actually increases the number of... The, it increases the range of the number of blocks you can hear it. So ordinarily it's at 16, but if I change it to, in this case, 12.5, all you gotta do is multiply your volume by 16 and you get the radius of where your sound is, uh, where your sound can be heard. But we'll get to that in a little bit, a little bit more in a minute. Now, I originally thought that the volume declination, this line here, was going to be parabolic, but it turns out it's not. I had someone look into the game code for me, and it turns out it is a coded to be linear. Uh, some testing from Jerry Breno indicates this may not be 100% accurate. There may be a little bit of a glitchiness to it. Uh, you can find a screenshot of his findings down in the description. But anyway, this is the line of volume declination, okay? Now, it just so happens that there's a sweet spot between... 0.75 or so and 1 of volume where you can't really tell the difference. I mean, you can tell the difference if you're really trying to look for it, but for all intents and purposes in your adventure map, you won't be able to tell whether it's 0.75 or 1. So that means that we've got this little space here that we want the volume to be all the time. Because the problem with teleporting the player away from the source is you want the sound to be heard throughout this section of your map, right? You don't want it to just, you don't want it to sound like it's coming from an armor stand. You want it to be everywhere. So this will make a little bit more sense when we go over here. But remember that when you choose your volume in the play sound command, it basically stretches this graph out horizontally, as you can see over here. Now, as you can see, there are two parts to this. This is uh, with a volume of 12.5. You see, we still have a, radio, uh, a real volume between 0 and 1, because those are the only actual volumes it can be. Uh, but the X goes all the way to 200, and now you can see that our sweet spot is actually much larger. It goes from 0 to about 50, which means that 
in there's about a 50 block radius around the source of the sound where it will sound more or less the same volume. So that means that's our sweet spot. That's where we want all the sound to be. Uh, so in other words, for this particular portion of your uh, hypothetical map, this section of the map would only be 50 blocks in radius. And then you would have to make the next part of your map over 200 blocks away. Because you don't, you want, well, let me move on to this. It's sort of hard to explain. This green block box represents the fade. This is where the player is going to start to actually hear the music fading out. And we kind of want this to at least simulate a little bit of a parabola, at the end of it at least. This is uh, what a parabola looks like. So let's watch what happens from the time you press the button to the end of the transition. The first thing that happens is we summon a ta armor stand named Fade In right here. Then we set block, a redstone block, at the function that I call Black Fade In. So let's go take a look at what that is, Black Fade In. So let me put on the resource pack and you can see what I'm actually doing. Now the visual fade is actually done with different damage values of an unbreakable, that's the key that it's unbreakable, um, wooden pickaxe. Now this actually uses the offhand slot. So if we take a look here, by the way, this is where the redstone block gets set and it activates this line. So let's use something way down here. So here we replace item in the offhand, a wooden pickaxe with a damage of seven and it's unbreakable. And you can actually assign a custom block model to unbreakable items and to different damage values. So if we take a look here, you saw the screen just got darker. Uh, there's wooden pickaxe damages one through 20 are different opacities of just a black screen. Now you can actually see this a little better. By the way, the downside of this is that you can't use the offhand slot in your adventure map unless you like take care of it first because uh, otherwise the player is going to lose what's in their inventory. So if we jiggle the camera a bit, you can sort of see at the edges there uh, that this is just a off an item in your hand. Now, of course, if you... Um, Of course, if you were doing this for real, you would make it larger so the player couldn't jiggle it. But for all intents and purposes, this is what we do. So every tick, we increase the damage value on the wooden pick. So it goes from 1 to 20. So that means it takes one second for that fade to happen. Then, five redstone ticks later, we replace your head slot with a pumpkin. Now, originally it was just going to be the pumpkin, but I decided that uh, I wanted a visual fade as well. And in this resource pack, the pumpkin is just a black screen. Now, it's important to note that when we have the final uh, wooden pickaxe 22 on, we can actually still see our hand, right? But if we get a pumpkin, a pumpkin actually covers up the uh, arm of the player. As you can see, we actually can't see anything. So basically, there are a number of frames of the fade. Because the arm actually seems to get darker first. So let, let's continue and see what happens. Also, on this last one here, you get a levitation of 255, which basically just keeps you at the same Y level. Then we set a block at the fade-in armor stand. We kill the fade-in armor stand, and then we reset the mechanism. So let's go see what that is, what, what happens next. So after the redstone block gets set, let me get a sword here. After the redstone block gets set, we teleport the player to, whoops, we teleport the player to y equals negative three. And the reason why we do that is because no matter what the light level is, when you're at y equals negative three, first of all, you're in the void, but you don't, you aren't in the void so much that you end up taking damage. And because of the levitation effect, you don't fall at all. And you can't go up either. So you're sort of in limbo at y equals negative 3, but when you're at y equals negative 3, your arm actually darkens just because of the light level. So we have these different frames, which is once we have the whole uh, wooden pickaxe fade in, so we have wooden pickaxe damage 20 on our offhand, which means a totally black screen, then we get a pumpkin on our head, which makes the arm disappear. And then we, we have this sort of half faded in darker arm, down at the bottom there. So anyway, every four ticks, we do another gradual teleport away from the source. So we just do 20 blocks at a time. 20 blocks, 20 blocks, 20 blocks. And this is giving us that linear curve of 
uh, the sound fade out. Because w remember, once you ex exit that 50 block radius that we found the sweet spot in, it's going to sound like that you're going to be able to notice the sound getting softer. Then toward the end here, I have a little bit of a parabolic curve in that I reduce the number of redstone ticks per teleport and I reduce the number of blocks teleported. So you get that nice little flare of a curve at the end. And you have to play with these values yourself for each, for each size area. Then on the final teleport, or sorry, not on the final, on the second to last teleport, okay, we replace the slot with air. We replace their head with air, so they no longer have a pumpkin on. Now we're, we just have the dark arm. Four ticks later, we teleport them to the final spot of where we want them to be. So now suddenly the arm brightens up again because we're no longer at y equals negative three. A number of ticks later, we start the music executing at armor stand tag equals two, which is in the center of our second area. And that has a uh, volume of 18.75, so we have an even larger sweet spot. The key is to make the sweet spot just the right uh, size and to know where that is. Then we set a block to do the fade out, which we'll take out, look at in a second. And five ticks later, we have the repeat command block teleporting the player repeatedly to this final spot. And that just prevents any jittery quality of it, so on and so forth. But let's go take a look at the fade out function. So over here we have the fade out function, and it's pretty much identical to the other one, except this time we go from wooden pickaxe 20 down to wooden pickaxe 1. And then finally, we get rid of the wooden pickaxe altogether. We clear the offhand slot. We also remove the player's levitation, which, uh, the, because they had the levitation while this fade out is happening, it also prevents them from moving around even more, uh, in addition to the teleport command block. So then we execute at an armor stand named Fade Out. I'm not actually doing that in this world, but if you wanted to execute Redstone after you did, uh, after the Fade Out, after, rather, after the scene transition, then you could do that. We kill that armor stand, and we reset it. And that is how it works, but sort of to give you a better overview of all of this, let's take a look at the steps necessary to create your own scene transitions. Uh, this sign should not be here. So, the first thing we do is we summon a fade armor stand and we begin the black fade in uh, function. Then when black fade in finishes, and of course this world download will be in the description as well as these functions you can install, black fade in finishes, one redstone tick later, for, you do the first relative teleport to y equals negative three. Then four redstone ticks later, you do your second relative teleport. And then each relative teleport is spaced apart by four redstone ticks, and then finally fewer redstone ticks in the last few teleports to sort of create a faux parabolic curve. Then on the last relative teleport you do, you remove the pumpkin, which has already been put there automatically by the function. Four redstone ticks later, you have your final absolute coordinate teleport to the final location. 23 redstone ticks later, you execute the new play sound at the center of the local area, and the game mode to ignore that, Eight redstone ticks later, we begin the black fade out function. Then five redstone ticks after black fade out begins, we have the repeat command block going. So uh, that's not 100% necessary, but you sort of need a little bit of a pulse to, you know, keep that one going. It's not, that last command block isn't entirely necessary. Um, so that was sort of a whirlwind of an explanation. It was sort of hard to explain. Uh, hopefully you sort of got my meaning. If there's anything I could do to make it clear, please let me know. Uh, but let's take a look one more time at how, at this. So, we go over here. We press the button. We get the wooden pickaxe, the pumpkin, we disappear into the void. We fade out, we teleport away, 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 away. Then we remove the pumpkin, we go out of the void, and we remove the levitation, and we're on our way to the next place. Now, uh, a few side effects of this, when we actually, the sound actually continues playing in the other chunks, even though they're not loaded, which is kind of interesting. So when we do this, uh, we'll be moved away, of course, then here comes the pumpkin, and then, oh, it's very loud. Wow. Uh, but anyway, if we kill ourselves... You can see we're back in these chunks, although these are the spawn, spawn chunks, uh, but the sound is still going on. So, uh, by the way, you can stop all sounds just by doing that.
So that is all there is to it. Again, if there's anything I could do to make it clear, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you plan on using this concept in your maps, I really do, uh, I would appreciate some some credit. I will have some one command installations for you in the description to install some of these functions. So, uh, that is just about all I have time for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to check out the JFAC description for more science. I will see you next time. And of course, thanks for watching.